So today's video is so, so exciting. I get to talk about the missions trip that I was on this weekend. Um, just some testimonies from the trip of just ways God absolutely moved and some things I learned and just some scripture. I'm not really sure where I'm going with this video. Uh, there's so much I wanna talk about. So much happened this weekend that just completely changed me forever, but not really sure how we're gonna fit all that into a video. So I'm just praying that God will move and make this video whatever he wants it to be whatever story he wants to tell um but yeah if you're interested then keep on watching so real quick i just want to explain a few of the things that we did um the first thing we did was show up um friday morning and we went to like the one of the areas of town that just really needs the most love and we just walked up and down the streets picking up trash um, and if people would stop and were interested in saying what are you doing you know what's this all about we just got to say like we're here we just want to love god love people show our city some love and then we got to ask them if they needed prayer and i think just about everyone who stopped us and asked what we were doing um we got to pray over and pray for uh we did go to um, the blessing board they distribute furniture to families who are in need of furniture and then of course the families leave is so much more they get to leave with hope for a future and they get to leave after being loved on so we got to do that um, we went to a like residential building where everyone who was living there either had a disability or had challenges in some way and we got to just have a cookout for them and just place hands on all the people and just pray over them a lot of people left with the bible even if they didn't receive prayer we were able to just you know go up to people and sit down and have a conversation with them a lot of the people there weren't used to that so that was really amazing as well um, other things we did were just walked around the communities and just just prayed over the communities we also got to give out like free italian ice one of the days um so we were holding signs and saying like pull over for free ice like um and as they'd come in they'd ask us what it's all about and we would hand them an invite to church and just say you know show the lady at the counter your invite and you will get some free ice because then they got an invite to church and we would ask them if they need prayer for anything and if they didn't we would say well regardless you know we did this for you just for you to have some time to yourself or have some time with your family just time where you get to just sit back and enjoy a free treat um, and just take a little break or they wanted prayer and we were able to do that for them as well so we did a lot of great things um, that's just very like in short here's what we did but it was amazing and I can't wait to tell you some of the stories that came from it and some of the things that I learned the first story I want to tell you is actually about the very first woman that I got to pray with and my team got to pray with um, so we were walking down the street just picking up garbage collecting garbage and of course she kind of you know came out of her house and asked us what we were doing and then um, we got to pray for her but this story <laughs> and how God just brings people we prayed and prayed that God would bring us those who really needed him and he and he showed up like first person day one so what happened was this woman came out of her house and asked what we were doing and we explained uh, she wanted prayer but her story um, so she was on the phone with I think it was her brother and they had some rough things going on in their family that day or during this season her and her brother were talking and he just said you know like I'm gonna go call my prayer lines like I need to just ask people to pray for us right now so I'm gonna go call them and she said I'm gonna go call my prayer lines too um, once I get off the phone with you just go ask some friends ask around call them just say please keep thinking of our family keep us in your prayers and she walked out the house right off her step and standing a block away from her house was this church oh I don't mean to get emotional we were standing there and she came out to us and she was just like awestruck of God and she was like I just told my brother like you go call your prayer lines I'm gonna go call mine and I step out my door and there's people standing there asking me if I need prayer like I don't mean to get emotional it's just like God wants to show up he wants to make those moments where like there's no denying that he's moving and we got to experience that with her we got to stand there with her and just hold her hand and love on her and pray with her she never had to question if god was there because she walked right outside um you know feeling hurt and lost and god showed up and he just he brought her to us and he brought us to her and and he just basically shook her and was like i hear you 
and there's people here who want to pray for you and I can promise you that it's going to get better. Um, so we got to experience that with her and that was amazing. God's plans for us are so precise. He works things out so perfectly that we're able to see him move in our life. He knew that she was gonna have that phone call. He knew that her brother was gonna say, I'm gonna go call my prayer lines, you go call yours. And he planted us right outside her porch, a block away, standing there in a group, cleaning the streets at that exact moment that when she got off the phone and had that conversation, that he would show up and say, here are your prayer lines. We're here, we're ready, you're not going through this alone. Like he just, he plans things so perfectly. And we got to see that throughout so many different instances on this trip and oh it's just so beautiful how he moves the next story i want to tell you about didn't come from my campus my church has five campuses so we were doing uh, missions work all throughout pittsburgh and the surrounding areas but we were kind of doing like a little report back on what we learned a uh, saturday night and this woman from the one campus shared a testimony that that you might not even think like, oh, that's God moving, but then you hear these testimonies and you're like, wow, he, he moved on this trip. So they were doing something kind of simple. Um, they were just, they got like uh, in an ice truck. So they were doing the same, like giving out free ice. Um, and this woman standing on stage mentioned that there was this group of kids, just picture some neighborhood kids, you know, riding on their bikes or whatever they were doing, um, just hanging around the neighborhood and they got to enjoy some free ice together. The area that I live in, the area of the churches, it's not a great area. Um, and unfortunately, while they were on this missions trip and they were giving out free ice, I think it was on the same street or a very close vicinity, someone had OD'd. And, you know, you might think at first, like, wow, this is the enemy moving, like, why you know we're just trying to spread love into the community and we have to watch the one od and it might make us lose hope or stuff like that but but that thought like that's not what came to her mind what came to her mind was had the church not been there that day then the children would have been worried about the person who had overdosed and all that that darkness would come into their young minds and their young hearts but for just a second just just a moment like they were able to just enjoy their ice and focus on their friends and on being a kid again that because the church was there they didn't have to they didn't have to witness someone dying they didn't have to continue to be plagued by the darkness in our community they could just sit there and enjoy being a kid how great is God right how much can he move so simple you know having ice like you might not think that that's God moving but when he put that idea into the hearts of the pastors and the leadership team and those all everyone who planned the missions trip, he put that in mind so that he could protect those children that day. Like that's how much he thinks ahead of time. That's how much he moves. And it was just so great to be able to hear that testimony and know that our God is moving in our city. I just wanna share what she said because this, this is God, this is what he did. She said, we saw darkness vanish for that moment of time, there was light in that community. And that's so true. That's so true. You can do missions wherever, every single place needs the love of Jesus. But when you're in a community that's so plagued by darkness and violence and just sorrow, for there to be light for a day or for an hour, like that's God. You know, that's a bigger blessing and you're, you're gonna plant seeds in the lives of those people who get to witness that. Oh, that's so amazing and that just gives us hope that there can be light in those dark communities there can be God in those dark communities and we can believe for that and God can he showed us that and it's just so amazing to hear that story so one of the men in my church had a chance to um, speak before we left for missions and just share some of his truths with us and I just want to share um, this thing because it really resonated with me along the lines of if I can remember you know, sometimes you see these great miracles of God and, you know, Jesus raising people from the dead. You almost might get a little discouraged if you're not seeing miracles um, so astounding like that happening around you. But he, all oh, those words he spoke, he said, we have the wrong idea of the dead. 
and he's talking about spiritual death and how those around us can be spiritually dead. They can be without Christ and they can be broken and lost, able to do something about that. He said, when we speak life into people, we are raising them from the dead. Wow, like I had to grab my pen and, and write that one down because you know, it's so true. Sometimes you, you're expecting these astounding miracles of physical healing and, and, and renewal and revival that if you're not seeing those things around you, that you, you start to question, you know, why, why can't I do this? Why I just want, I'm, I'm putting myself in a position, God, and I'm asking you to use me and I feel like you're not using me, but he is. Come on. When we speak life into people, we are raising them from the dead. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. So I want to tell you one more story of one of the people we met. Um, we were at the Blessing Board. Like I said, it, it's a furniture bank kind of thing. The one woman who came, uh, she didn't really have a very large truck. And she was a little concerned because, you know, she was worried. She really wouldn't be able to receive all that she needed. But she had this main priority, and that was to get her son in bed. My pastor shared later, she had her phone out, and she had her son at home weeping. <laughs> because when his mom got home that day, he was gonna have a bed. And that night, for the first time in I don't know how many years, he was gonna be able to go to sleep on a bed and not the floor. She was so thankful for the blessing board, all the hard work that they do, and so thankful for us to just be there and just love on her. You know, that's what we were there for. We were there to help her pick out furniture and some household items, but we were also there to to put food in her hand and to put a Bible in her hand and to pray over her family. And we got to do that. We got to see her leave so thankful that her son didn't have to sleep on the floor that night. And we got to see her leave um, with a renewed hope in her eyes. And I believe that she's going to meet Jesus and that she's going to come back to him or find him and that God is going to surround her family with love and protection. I'm believing in that. So that was just another story of just you know, the people are out there, the hurt, the broken, the lost, those in need, they're out there. And we just, we have to go to them and hold them and just love on them and pray over them. And that's what being a Christian is all about. And I'm just forever thankful that God was willing to just use me and to show up in my life so that I can just be his arms and feet and love all of his children. It was just an amazing, amazing weekend and such a blessing to be able to do that. I do want to finish this video uh, just providing some scripture that just really um, helped me understand why we do missions. So Hebrews uh, 6 verse 10 begins, For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers, as you still do. <laughs> So when I was reading this, it was just like, wow, uh, God wanted me to read that, right? That he will never forget how hard we have worked for him. And that when we care for other believers, that that's us showing our love to him. And it makes so much sense, but to think like, there's a verse in the Bible that says that, and it's a verse in Hebrews, which I've been reading this past week, um, that God led me to this past week. Like, he wanted me to hear that. You know, every time we open our Bibles, um, there's always intention, and there's things that he wants us to see. And I'm just so thankful that he was able to show that verse to me. It continues in verse 11. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts, in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. <laughs> it's just so amazing. Like, if we keep on loving others, which is God's plan for us, then we can be certain that everything we hope for is going to come true. I love how in verse 12 it says, then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. And I love this because there were times where, you know, that has happened to me. I've been a Christian for maybe a year and a half, but there were periods where I noticed like I missed a few weeks in a row of church or, you know, I stopped wanting to be there. I, ha I went sometimes months without opening my Bible. I mean, come on, let's be honest. And those were periods where I was spiritually dull. I was spiritually indifferent and I had a lot of questions. And, you know, of course, one way to help that is to read his word and to pray to him and get connected in the church like of course but even more than that the bible notes in hebrews that 
when we are loving God's people, that's when we don't become spiritually dull. Like, come on. <laughs> that's so amazing that he tells us that and then it continues that instead of being spiritually dull and indifferent we will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance after serving on missions my first time he brings me to Hebrews 7 verse 7 and without question the person who has the power to give a blessing is greater than the one who is blessed like <laughs> that's where the power is that's where it's greater it's not about being blessed it's about bringing blessings to others and he revealed that truth to me in the Bible like the day after I'd finished the mission trip when I was in a devotional saying God reveal some things to me I didn't even know that by reading Hebrews 6 and 7 he was gonna reveal so many things about the missions field to me he showed me things that applied exactly to what I had been doing all weekend, to what I had been pouring my heart and my soul and my physical labor into all weekend. If there was one word just hung over this trip that God wanted me to learn, it was the first night you're just getting equipped to go and spread his kingdom with the world. The one man I mentioned before was standing on stage and he said it. He was just like, all you have to do is make yourself available. That's how easy it is. You know, you think I have to study the scripture, which is great. And I have to be able to quote Bible verses, which is great. And like those things help. But all we have to do in order to serve his mission is to make ourselves available. Show up, say, God, have me, take me, take my spirit, Lord, use me. Whatever you wanna do, I'm there. Let me be your hands and feet. Just step out and say, I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready for you to work through me. I'm ready for you to show up so that I can pour your love out onto everyone else that I come into contact with. That's all you have to do. Just show up, say, I'm available. I'm yours. I'm in desperate need for you to use me and pour me out into the world. And he's going to. I just wanted to share that because that's like, that is, what God wanted me to learn. God taught me so many things throughout this trip. I've done so many things for the first time. I felt my faith overflow. But if there's anything that God wanted me to learn, was that all I have to do is make myself available for him. Step out in faith and he is going to use me. And he's going to use you and anyone else out there and anyone else that you share this message with. He wants to use us. And when we step out, he will. There's a message that God wanted me to share with you today. And I'm here, I'm making myself available, and I'm sharing it. So thanks so much for watching. Um, it was amazing to be able to share his word uh, with you all and share the things that I learned and the things that he did through me and through my community. Um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Comment down below any suggestions you have for future videos or any questions you have about my faith. I am always willing to answer any question and I love getting to talk with you all. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I can't wait to talk again soon. <laughs>